Ferris wheel, which I'm gonna go check out. Um, so I'm going to meet somebody actually for lunch, which I'm really excited about. It's actually somebody that um, we have a connection because of, um, we met because I was coaching her <laughs> um, as an artist and she was, um, she lived in Paris. And so now uh, we're gonna meet up for lunch and I'm so excited and um, yeah, just starting to feel de-stressed from the traveling and looking forward to enjoying and exploring today. I'm gonna to take you with me. So I just walked through the Tul I think I'm in the Tuileries Gardens. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure I am. But it is so beautiful here. And I love that right near where I'm staying, there's a carousel. This is one of the things I wanted to paint while I was here is a French carousel. And there's one like basically right across the street from my hotel. And so I'm definitely gonna do that. And uh, it's just breathtakingly beautiful here. So breathtakingly beautiful. I'm a big gardener. Well, I have a very small plot at home, but um, but I do love to garden in it. And these gardens are just divine. They have such a beautiful mix of both wild and also planned. There's a lot of purple flowers too, which I really enjoy. And I love the way that they shape the trees here. So beautiful if you can see they kind of make the trees like square and it gives it this surreal Alice in Wonderland kind of vibe which I really love so I'm going to have to find out exactly what these beautiful buildings are because there's honestly so many of them and I have no idea what they are but I think that that's the Louvre because I think I see that the glass pyramid over there so why don't we go over there and check it out so I just visited this cute little cafe and it's called Cafe Kitsune. So my parents have a dog and his name is Kitsune. So I had to stop in, see what this cafe was all about. I got a almond milk matcha latte and it's delicious. It's really good. Yes, I can see the glass pyramid from here. So I think that it's right, this huge building right here is the Louvre. Oh. So my plan in Paris is to do a lot of painting, uh, but today I really want to just kind of scope out some of the ideas that I had, kind of walk around because it's such a beautiful day. It said it was 88 degrees Fahrenheit, 
but it doesn't feel that hot, honestly. It feels like it feels like 75, 80, and um, like really dry. Like you don't really feel like it's humid or anything. So, so it's a perfect day to just walk around and take in the sights and see what's uh, see what's going on. Yes, that was definitely the Louvre. I'm not going to go in it today, uh, but um, it's good to know that it's there. And I will probably be visiting that sometime this week. And over here, there's these interesting hedges that are like little mazes. Everyone's having a picnic in them. And it's so lovely. Really, everything about Paris is so beautiful, especially here in the town center the central part of Paris. It's so beautiful. It's, it's unreal. I mean, I like Philadelphia. I like the parts of Philadelphia that I live in, but um, it really doesn't compare to Paris. <laughs> so I am such a tourist and I don't even care. I am so excited and happy to be here. And I have been planning and dreaming of a residency in France for pretty much like ever since I even wanted to be an artist. So like 20 years and I'm finally here. I finally made it and um, it's really amazing. And I just caught a glimpse of the Eiffel Tower and it just makes me really happy. So here we go, I'm gonna show it to you. You can only see the top of it, but I might go visit it maybe tomorrow. So it's right over here. Right there. You see it? It's barely there, but it's there. Okay, I just wanted to show you, show you guys that. It's very exciting. So I have to go meet my friend for lunch and I will catch up with you guys later. So as I'm walking around, I'm struck by how beautiful this city is, but it made me actually think, what is creating this impression of beauty all around me? Like everywhere I look, I feel like it's beautiful. And we actually studied this in art school. Like is beauty in the eye of the beholder or does beauty have objective qualities? And um, when you're talking about beauty in a landscape, it's very interesting uh, because, you know, people are drawn to different landscapes that actually feel like they can survive in them. So when you look around and you see a lot of gardens and you see a lot of blue skies and you see um, just like things are thriving, it actually creates a response in you that wants more of it. And so that's kind of like an experience of beauty for you. But I think that there's more to it than that. I, what, when I'm looking around, I see a lot of symmetry. So there's a lot of symmetry in these gardens. And um, I think that symmetry is something that we're drawn to naturally as, as humans, because symmetry is found in nature and it usually means harmony, wholeness, and health. Um, and to even create symmetry artificially, like by planting these trees in specific ways, um, or creating art that's very symmetrical. I think it's very pleasing to just our psyche because it's it draws down to that impulse to be drawn to life and health and um, and wholeness. Because if you think of like if you think of like a leaf in a tree, um, when you look at that leaf, it has 
a symmetry to it, right? So there's like a vein that goes up the center and then there's all these branching veins that come out of it, but they're symmetrical. And so that's just like a tiny microcosm of nature. And so when we even artificially create symmetry in our art, in our landscape, in architecture, I think it's really pleasing to the eye. Um, but there's more to it too. And I want to try to uncover that. And I'll be thinking about that this week. So here's some more symmetry for you. Very symmetrical. So we are here at the Palais, Palais Garnier, Palais Garnier. <laughs> and uh, we're going to go do a self-guided tour and this is where they thought of the, um, the Phantom of the Opera. Yeah, this is where they set it with the one with Gerard Butler and Emmy Rosa. And I thought that this was a whole nother section but it's actually just mirrors. So that is also very Phantom of the Opera, you know, all the mirrors. So you can kind of see how ornate it already is. So we're going to take you through it, take you up the stairs. Here we go. Hello, I hope you're doing well. I had a wonderful day. Um, my friend and I, we visited um, the Royal Palace and we took a tour of it and it was very fun. Um, and we visited a Dior shop and walked around and just toured the city a little bit. 
and afterwards I was so tired and I think I was feeling the jet lag a little bit so um, I actually slept for an hour and it was amazing and I'm feeling much more rejuvenated now so I'm actually on my way to go see a ballet so I love the ballet I have not seen a ballet in years and um, I thought that it would be a really special thing to go see a ballet in Paris and they actually have on a Midsummer Night's Dream, which is one of my favorite plays. I've actually never seen it as, an, a, uh, as a ballet before, but when I was a kid, me and my sister um, put on the play, A Midsummer Night's Dream, in our backyard, in our family's barn, and we invited all the neighborhood kids to like play the different parts, and we rehearsed all summer. And so I have like a special affinity towards that particular play. Um, but I can't wait to see the ballet version because I love ballet. I think it's gonna be really special. The sets look amazing. It's like very traditional ballet. It's not like modern dance. So all of the sets and um, the costumes, they have that like true ballerina feel from like the Victorian times, which I love. And I thought I would dress up because, you know, going to the theater, it's very exciting in Paris. So I'm gonna take you with me. They probably won't allow filming, but if they do, I'll try to sneak it. So here I go, I'm taking you guys with me. So I'm here at the ballet and this one's definitely more modern than the earlier uh, opera house that I visited earlier today, um, but it's still beautiful and I'm so excited to see the performance. So the ballet was absolutely incredible. Oh my goodness. I can't even describe how beautiful it was. It was definitely one of the best things that I've ever experienced, actually. Um, I've seen a ballet before that really was moving for me. It was Sleeping Beauty, and it was um, a couple of years ago at the New York Ballet. But this was so beautiful and transcendent. And I think what makes it so special is that it's so live. Like all of these dancers are creating this world and it only exists during the time that they are actually um, dancing. And so it is very immediate and you can feel all of their emotions and um, they have to act as well as dance. And the costumes were absolutely amazing. Uh, really amazing. In particular, I loved the, um, th this one costume. I'm going to try to re recreate it. It was light pink. It had um, little red uh, bows and some trim. So beautiful. So um, yeah, it was very inspiring. And the, the set design was also absolutely incredible. So detailed, very uh, reminiscent of old ballets, like in the heyday of ballets in Victorian times. So I absolutely loved it. I'm like glowing. I, I just loved it. So now I'm taking a walk and I don't even believe it, but by the Louvre, there's a full moon rising and it's right over the Louvre and it looks fake. Like it's so beautiful and I'm going to show it to you. So if you can see it, there's a full moon rising right here. 
check it out. Isn't that amazing? It's a perfect night in Paris. I'm so happy to be here. So grateful. I just love everything about it. super early for a photo shoot and it's like nobody here it's awesome good morning today I am up early and um, I actually have to meet with a gallery today um, a friend actually recommended me to them so I'm meeting with some of the directors today which is really exciting so I'm up early just seeing some of the sites without any of the tourists and taking a walk around and um, it is so beautiful. I think I'm going to go get some breakfast and try to find like some green juice or something and then be on my way. So today I want to do some paintings. I'm not sure if I'm going to do some oil or watercolor. I might just do some watercolor to start and um, yeah, it should be a wonderful day. So. So I'm here in front of the Academy of Beaux Arts, De Beaux Arts, and it looks really amazing. I'm not sure if I can go in, but uh, I might try to uh, check it out. It doesn't look like it's open yet, but um, it definitely looks worth checking out, that's for sure. What amazing architecture. I also have a friend who went here, and she really loved it, so I'm curious to see what's inside. Looking at this amazing art store. It's not open yet, but it looks amazing. Everything is so old school. directrice de la culture and I love this place for for young people and uh, yes. there's a lot of place for the culture here. Yes, so you host opportunities for artists and you yes. have a beautiful garden yes. and um, you have so many opportunities for young people to study and practice. Exactly. Yeah, up to age 30, right? Yes, come to visit. Yes, yeah. yes it's amazing. It's an amazing place. Thank you, ladies. So I'm here at the House of India, which is a um, historical site, which is now a residency for artists. And um, we are here with the current artist in residence. Tell us your name and about your work. Hey, this is Mania Kobo. Nice to meet you. So welcome uh, at my studio. So you can see uh, everywhere uh, is my uh, artwork. Mm -hmm. So downstairs you have my studio uh, where I work. And uh, after I have a, like a space of uh, exhibition, you know, yeah, to uh, show my work mm -hmm. to the public. So 
we meet downstairs? Okay. We are downstairs now. And this mm -hmm. is my studio where, where I work. Mm -hmm. So you can see uh, three different styles uh, what, what I'm making. So this is uh, Vertigo. It's an uh, abstract painting uh, uh, inspired by uh, introspection and meditation. Mm. Uh, here you are a uh, matrix, mm -hmm. so it's like a more uh, uh, architectural uh, painting uh, inspired by uh, the myth of the labyrinth. Oh, you know, yeah. Like uh, this big universe, mm -hmm. and so we are like uh, lost mm -hmm. you know, in mm -hmm. this uh, giant uh, universe. Mm -hmm. And so the last series is like uh, inspired by uh, Braille. Mm -hmm. So uh, I combined it with uh, typography, and uh, we have uh, like a rounded shape uh, world. Yeah, we do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do. So you make each of these yeah, um, by hand. Yeah. It's uh, like uh, it's. Uh, Mold from uh, for uh, chocolate. Oh, and and what Basically. is it? Is it what it's is it like a resin, uh, resin or plaster? Or okay, and this is inspired by Braille, which is the language yeah, for it's the blind. Like, uh, exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. And tell me about the words that you chose. They're uh, very poetic. It's a combination between a, a spiritual aspect uh, of my vision of the world. You know, like. Uh, it's a way for me to explain uh, that uh, this place is like magic. Mm. You know? Paris or the world? The world and the life. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. nice. I agree. I love it. Well, thank you so much for showing us. And um, yeah, we'll be looking out for your work. Thanks. So this is an amazing museum here. And do you want to tell us about the museum? Yes, this is a Norway Sweden pavilion from the uh, International uh, Universal Exhibition in the 19th century. And uh, then it used to be uh, an atelier for artists. Like for example, some women uh, used to sculpt and paint here, and then the, the city bought the place and made it a museum wow. in the 19th century. And we still have an exhibition for artists from the 19th century. Mm -hmm. We have local very interesting artists, painting and sculptors, especially women. Mm -hmm. So we mm -hmm. are working uh, Contemporary with... women or uh, or women from um, other centuries? Uh, especially, uh, especially 19th century. Okay. Yes. okay. Amazing. But we, we probably next year uh, have contemporary artists too. Okay. Yes. Maybe That's me? Maybe you, exactly. <laughs> exactly, we hope so. Okay. Yeah. I love I used to paint too. Mm -hmm. So, um, I, I, I'm not sure. I'm saying it's, it's her, but it's his work. Oh, and, I see. Uh, okay. Uh, I was, um, she looks very um, happy. This is her work. Mm -hmm. This is an exhibition with work of her and work of uh, one Oh, uh, okay. Both centuries. This is for the image, I think, today. Beautiful. And this is Fadina uh, Wabe. This is work. He paints happy people very well. They look truly yeah. very happy. <laughs> yeah, right. Beautiful. Oh, my goodness. What a treasure this is. So this is an amazing painting. Who did this again? What's his name? Uh, his name is Leon Charles Canicioli. Leon Charles Canicioli, okay. And he was the first director of this museum here. Mm. And this is many paintings and uh, drawings about uh, uh, sea and sun. <laughs> oh, I love his paint box. Different subjects. What a fun little paint box. Yeah, so amazing. I love the energy of the brush strokes and the. And these colors, so beautiful. Yes. Wow. It reminds me of Maxfield Parish a little bit. Or, um, you know N.C. Wyeth? Yes. The American illustrator? Yes. We, I live right near um, yeah. N.C. Wyeth Museum, mm -hmm. and I used to go there often. Hello. I had the most wonderful day. 
um, full of unexpected opportunities, actually. Um, and it was just a wonderful day meeting some new people here and seeing some sights. Um, and now I am on my way to the Eiffel Tower because I would love to paint it. I want to paint it while I'm here. So um, tomorrow they're having fireworks there, so there's going to be a ton of crowds. So I'm trying to take advantage of it tonight. Um, and yeah, I'm going to take you with me. So I made it to the Eiffel Tower and there's a lot of crowds, but it is really beautiful and the air is kind of pink and purple and it's just as amazing as it is in pictures. I'm going to try to get down beneath the Eiffel Tower because there's a beautiful reflecting pool I would love to paint, but here's my view right now. so beautiful and they actually light up the Eiffel Tower and it sparkles with lights um, every hour after sunset so I'm looking forward to seeing that as well day in Paris, my last full day, and um, the streets are so quiet. It is early morning, it's around uh, 7.30, and so I'm taking a walk early in the morning, getting my day started early, and um, it's so magical. I don't even see one other person out here. You can really see the beauty of the architecture and the streets. So last night I did some painting at the Eiffel Tower and I loved it. It was a really surreal moment just to be there and to be um, painting the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> and um, But there was a lot of people there and I was really, I had a hard time falling asleep because there was so much energy there and um, so much excitement and I was painting till like 10 p.m. and I think I just like absorbed some of the excitement or something. So today I'm going to try to just stick to painting during the daytime. And um, yeah, although tonight is supposed to be, uh, today is Bastille Day actually. And I didn't even plan this, but I'm here for Bastille Day. So there's celebrations all over the city today, especially tonight. It's kind of like their 4th of July. So um, I don't know what I'm gonna do tonight. I mean, I'm right across the street from um, the Luxembourg Gardens, so they might be having something, I don't know. The Louvre might be having something that's very close by. So I might just like walk over there and see what's going on later tonight. But um, I'm excited today. I am visiting a museum. I'm gonna be visiting Montmartre. Um, and yeah, just seeing some of the less touristy spots of, um, yeah, of Paris. I'm, I'm seeing this exhibition, it's called Romantic Heroines, Heroines Romantique, and um, it just kind of looked right up my alley, so I booked some tickets, and I'm gonna go see it actually this morning. So wish me luck, and I will see you guys soon. So I'm going to embark on this staircase. I'm going to the Sacre Coeur um, early in the morning to avoid the crowds. So um, yeah, wish me luck. It's been a long uphill climb.
Bonjour, good morning. Um, I am here in Montmartre and um, <clears throat> I just saw the most amazing view, which I showed you guys. And um, yeah, it's so beautiful here. There's a lot of artists also. Like I'm looking at an artist right now who's set up an easel and he's painting. There's another artist right over here. And um, yeah, it's nice to be in good company. Um, but today I am enjoying my little cafe here. And then I'm actually going to this museum. It's called the Museum of Romantic Life. Only in Paris would there be such a museum. It's called the Museum of Romantic Life. Uh, and of course the French version. And it has a beautiful exhibition. It's called uh, Romantic Heroines. And since that's what I paint, I thought that I would go see it. And I was very attracted to the, uh, the painting that I saw on the subway. And so it made me look up the exhibition. And so, yeah, supposedly it's in like this really old house and it has some beautiful gardens. So I'm really looking forward to that. I'm going to um, paint also the skyline from Montmartre uh, while I'm here. Um, I can actually, I'm looking out and I'm seeing it right now. It's very beautiful. All of the, uh, the buildings look like a light pink and different shades of gray and blue. And you can see for miles, like all over Paris. So I'm gonna try to capture that in a painting today as well. Um, yeah, and I'm gonna also wander around and make some more paintings, some different places. We'll see what I feel like. I have a little friend. So cute. Kitty. Hi. Hello. Aw. <laughs> the very cute Paris cat. So I am at the Museum of Romantic Life and it is so beautiful. It's very romantic. Let me check it out. With beautiful gardens, rose gardens. This actually reminds me of the Dior house. I worked for Dior for a long time and they had, uh, the house of Dior was very famous. Um, the house where he grew up. And it was also kind of like a pink color. Must be a French thing. Let's go see what's inside.
That was a lovely little museum. Um, I wanted to, when I was in Paris this time, to really see things that were off the beaten path that are not like the main museums. So I feel like I'm doing that. And it's much more calm. And um, I feel like I'm discovering all of these hidden gems. So next, I'm going to go to a really famous cafe. It's called Pink Mama. And supposedly, you're supposed to book it six months in advance. But I just realized it's around the corner, so I'm gonna try my luck. Hello, good afternoon. So I had to go home and take a nap because I was so exhausted. I'm definitely still having some jet lag, but um, I feel a lot better now. And I'm actually on my way to a very famous art supply store, and I can't wait to kind of check out what they have there. And then tonight I'm actually taking a little boat ride um, on the river so hopefully I'll be able to catch some of the fireworks from there and I'm really looking forward to that so yeah that is my evening tonight and I will try to capture as much of it as I can Good evening. So it is uh, late afternoon getting to the evening and um, I had a nice afternoon nap again because I'm very jet lagged still. <laughs> and um, it was a lot of walking around the city this morning. So um, I definitely just needed a rest. And I was carrying around all my painting supplies, which is uh, no small feat, just like walking for miles, um, you know, finding the best spots. So. Um, yeah, tonight I am just enjoying Paris. It's my last night in Paris, so um, I'm going on a river cruise, um, just a short river cruise to see uh, some of the sights. And I've never done that before, so I'm really excited. And I'm actually standing in front of Notre Dame right now because I am going to the Latin Quarter because I've been hearing a lot about that, that I have to see that. So I'm just going to walk around, maybe go to some bookstores if they're still open. And um, yeah, I'm really excited. And Notre Dame Cathedral is looking great, actually. Um, since the fire, it's not been open, but, um, but it looks great. I'll show you guys. So the icon of the Notre Dame Cathedral is still intact. It looks fantastic. And um, I'm sure they're working on a lot right now. So um, yeah. That was a lovely experience. Shakespeare and Company is one of the oldest bookstores here. And um, it was, it's a wonderful experience. I actually got a book. It's called Status Anxiety. And um, it has a bunch of chapters about art and art and snobbery and why the art world is the way that it is. And um, it's very well written. It's part psychology and part history. And 
just really seems like something that I would benefit from, especially, I think, I just want to know more about that because I'm in the art world and I see a lot of that and I was just drawn to it. So I'm going to be enjoying that as I, uh, as I go to my residency. Maybe I'll read it, read it on the train tomorrow. I have a long train ride tomorrow. So that was lovely and now I think I'm going to get some dinner and then go to the boat ride. So. the fireworks and enjoy the evening so it is Bastille Day and it's crazy the crowds are crazy here 